Hey folks, this is Vince with Ads Gaming Addiction, and today we're going to quickly review Above Snakes. This is a game that is coming to Steam on May 25th, 2023. Now, I am recording this about 18 hours prior, so what you're looking at here, for the most part, should be reflective of the finished product, but there might be a last-minute patch or two that might address some things. Now, according to my press sheet, there is no price tag, so I can't comment on that. However, there is supposedly 20 plus hours of estimated game time, they're single player only, and it's for the Windows platform. Other key features listed here, it's a survival RPG with a twist, create a world from world pieces, 100 plus unique world pieces with different biomes and biome combinations, craft, farm, hunt, fish, build bases, and fight in order to stay alive, make it your own with a long-term progression system, high replay value, complete quests at your own pace, and unravel the secrets across the land, and a lightweight story of a young woman in the middle of a conflict. Now when you hit play, there is no sandbox mode, you just hit start journey, and you just go forth into the world and complete quests and advance the story that way. It's a survival game, so you'll be building houses along the way, crafting, and all that good stuff. Alright, so in the very beginning of the game, you'll go through a tutorial, as is typical. It's actually separate from the world that you're about to be thrust into. Um, you learn to talk to people, you learn to harvest resources, you learn to eat and build stuff, that kind of thing. Once you actually get into the world itself you are put down into this very small square. And the whole world is broken up into squares that haven't been built yet. In fact, that's the main gimmick of this game. It's a top-down survival game, but you can shape the world as you go. Everything you do in this game, whether it be chopping down a tree, or pickaxing a rock, harvesting berries, uh, fishing, hunting, anything that you do in this game is going to earn you something called Scouting XP. And every time you fill the bar, you gain one build point. And using this build point, you'll be able to place down new squares adjacent to ones that you already have. So again, you start off in a very small square, and then you do things. And then you fill up your XP bar, your, your Scouting XP bar. And then you put down, let's say, another grassland biome or whatever. After a while, your beginning area will start to grow. And there's something called a cartography table. With this cartography table, you can spend the resources that you're earning in order to unlock new biome tiles, which is kind of cool. So you can spend these resources to unlock this forest biome, okay? Some of these biome squares are variations of the same theme. It might be, you know, all grassland, or maybe half grassland, half forest. And you can even rotate the tile in question so that you can fit it properly. And it has to be adjacent, that you have to match the biomes when you're rotating your piece. You can't put grassland next to a forest. Um, you have to match the biomes. If you've ever played the board game Carcassonne, it's very similar to that. But you unlock new biomes. There's like a water biome, like a little beach, like a little lakeside, whatever. You can get dirty water from that. Very weird, by the way. Um, there's no like jars in this game. You just gather the, the dirty water from the lake and somehow these jars of dirty water mysteriously appear. <laughs> whatever. Anyway, there's prairies and the prairies in this game, you can get cotton and hemp um, and there's flowers that you can uh, get. Um, at some point through various quests, you'll get unique biomes that you can put down. And that's like your quest stuff. So, you know, you might be tasked with finding these provisions. That's one of the early quests in this game. Find the provisions. Well, all you got to do is put down the, uh, <laughs> the, the biome with, with the lost provisions in it. And you can even put it like if, if you've planned your, your stuff right, your, your biomes, you can put it right next door to your starting location, your house and all that. So it's kind of cool. You can actually, you know, if you're lucky enough or, you know, you plan ahead, you can put down, you know, stuff near you so that you don't have to keep, you know, walking. Now, if you're worried about, you know, making a mistake with placement, it's okay. You can actually destroy uh, existing biome squares in this game and remake them. Uh, you just have to spend, I think, ink and 
flowers, something like that, and you'll be able to destroy things. Um, in between all that, there's a day-night cycle. You'll be able to cook. You can cook your own food. You can craft various things at a workbench. You can even upgrade these workbenches as you go to and, and other various buildings. Eventually, you'll unlock things like furnaces and anvils. There's a tannery. There's an archery table. You'll need that to hunt. And it's really cool because as you do things in the environment, you level up these skills as well. So the more you chop down trees, the more you pick at rocks, um, your skill will improve in those respective categories, similar to that of, say, Skyrim. You can even customize your hotbar. It's pretty easy. You just go into your inventory and hit the number one, the number two, number three over the thing that you want, and it'll just... It'll appear there instead. Building in this game is fairly simple. You craft the wall or the foundation or the roof at a workstation. And from there, you just, <laughs> it's pretty easy. Everything pretty much snaps into place. One thing I do not like about the current build system is that you cannot move anything. So let's say you put your bed down somewhere and you want to move it later. Well, you have to destroy the existing bed, and I think there's a partial refund of resources. Um, when I destroyed my bed to move it, um, unfortunately, I only got like one out of the two resources that I needed to build it later. So it's just unfortunate that I just, I can't move stuff. I actually just have to uh, destroy it and rebuild it. Luckily, the resources in this game just continuously regenerate. Uh, rocks will always reappear in the same space. There's this one boulder that's always popping up outside of my house, right in front of my doorway, and I have to get rid of it with a pickaxe. Now, I could probably put a foundation down and prevent that from happening. I'm just saying resources do regenerate over time in this game, so it's not something that you really have to worry about. Um, to be honest with you, I really never felt challenged in this game. Um, the first time I experienced combat was when I attacked a beehive and to chop it down. And, and then it was very little danger. And then snakes came out of nowhere and attacked me. And that was like two hours in for a quest. Very easy. I didn't find any problems with that either. Um, I got poisoned, but you know, I only lost like half health that were after it was all said and done. There is a survival element to this, you know, drinking water, eating food, sanity, uh, sleeping, but it's not hard at all. Again, I didn't feel challenged whatsoever. I wasn't rushing to eat, rushing to drink. It was a very casual, very laid back experience. And that's one of the things that I'm kind of worried about with this game. There's no difficulty settings when you first create your game. So, you know, people might find this game too easy, too casual. Some might actually want to turn all combat off and just casually explore. It, none of that is available in this game. You are stuck. There's no sandbox. You are simply stuck with the campaign. And that's it. Yes, it's one of those campaigns where there's no timer and you can just do whatever you want whenever you want. That You could totally do that. However, still, it would have been nice to have some options. You know, maybe make the survival elements a bit more difficult. Oh boy, I'm cold because I'm outside. It doesn't really bother me. Like, I was outside for the entire night. Nothing happened to me. Um, in, at night, I, I expected, like, zombies to come out and attack. Nothing like that. Um, I stood outside waiting for something to happen to me, and nothing happened to me. So, like, I don't know if I'm just not far enough into the game yet. According to my, um, my save file, I'm 33% done with the game. So, yeah, I know there's more coming, but I'm, I'm one-third of the way through the game, and... Yeah, it's just, it's kind of disappointing. I'm kind of worried that the game doesn't have enough customization for my liking. But Above Snakes, do I recommend it? It honestly depends on the price. Again, I wasn't given that price tag. It's not a bad game by any means, but it could definitely be improved in a number of areas. But if you're looking for a chill game, just a very chill, very relaxed survival game, like if you find Seven Days to Die too challenging because, you know, crap keeps killing you over and over again, maybe that's not your thing, this game is going to be a bit more lax. Uh, I was really never hurting for resources. I was never struggling at all to stay alive. Um, but again, that's part of the game's downfall, just lack of customization and difficulty settings. I still recommend it anyway because I'm a sucker for these kind of games, but ultimately you have to look at the price tag whenever it is revealed and make that decision for yourself. This is Vince. Thanks for watching, and I will catch you all next time. Take care.